Hey, good morning, everybody, or Sunday morning, or Sunday afternoon, or whenever you're watching this, maybe Monday. I have no idea. Hopefully, you're just enjoying your Sunday. Uh, as you can see, I'm clearly not in Eugene, Oregon. Uh, this is not fake. I assure you, this is a real, <laughs> real backdrop. <laughs> Anyways, thoughts on the spring game, right? This is the day, the Scoop Dog Daily, so I only have so much time. Uh, you know, we'll talk spring game here. <clears throat> The immediate thought that comes off my mind is the fact that I appreciate that it was a balanced game. And by that, I don't think that the defense dominated the game in any fashion. I think the defense kind of started off the game uh, pretty hot, obviously kept the points down um, from the offense. But I think the offense got a little bit more comfortable uh, and got going as the game progressed, which is totally natural. That's I mean, that's that's to be expected uh, in any game that might even be what happens the first game of the year uh, when Oregon plays. But, no, I think, you know, if you're looking to be a, a championship caliber team, and that's what Oregon's looking to be, you want to have a balanced team. You want to have a good offense. You want to have a good defense. And I think what's most important about that, I don't think any of us have really any or very many questions about the offense. The offense did well yesterday easily could have been even better. You could see they were a bit hesitant. You could see that there was just, you know, like a Terrence Ferguson, Ferguson dropping a couple passes. He probably won't drop a couple passes all season. It's a spring game. It happens. It's going to be fine there. You know, I think the offense will clean some things up. Dylan Gabriel will get better um, when needed. Dante Moore uh, will be there in the pinch. Um, you know, Tez Johnson obviously looked tremendous out there. Uh, you know, Jay Harris looked good. Jordan James uh, is going to be – freaking dude we know that at running back didn't get to see Noah Whittington didn't expect to see Noah Whittington simply makes that that group even better um, but the bevy of receivers you know the offensive line had kind of a <clears throat> an up and down day if you will they you know did did allow some pressures a little bit but also created some really big running lanes for the running backs uh, to utilize in the game so you take the good with the bad <coughs> Again, to me, it looked like a really balanced team. I think defensively, you know, we've seen Oregon in the first year under Dan Landing. They weren't very good, okay? This last season, they took a massive step forward, was a was a very productive unit. To me, the spring game indicated that that unit is taking yet another step forward. <clears throat> and by no means am I calling them great, gang green or, or the greatest defense to ever play college football, but it certainly looks like a group that's going to be, you know, capable of, of helping Oregon win football games. And it's going to be a tough season. You've got some really good teams coming to town. You're in the Big Ten this year. You're going to have to play some physical, tough football. Uh, I think all of those things are good for Oregon. Oregon is very well positioned as an as a uh, you know Pac-12 team coming into the Big Ten, uh, being able to compete. So you've got to like that. You look at every room and the quarterback room, Stack the running back room, stack the tight ever, tight end room, stack wide receiver and corner might be the two deepest positions on the roster. Offensive lines in great shape, defensive lines in I don't want to say it's in great shape, but I think it's just a shade below that. It's in pretty good shape. Um, you know, I know Oregon's looking at potentially adding a transfer there on the defensive line, and if they do that, it makes it even better. If they don't, it's still a unit that I think can you know, help them win a Big Ten championship and, and compete for a national championship. So uh, I think I saw more out of that group than I expected uh, yesterday. So and that's a good thing. I think, you know, there was there was some concerns, maybe more about the interior of that defensive line. And I really thought they did a, a really good job. So, yeah, maybe they add a, a Derek Harmon or or somebody else in the transfer portal. Oh, well, that becomes a really filthy unit then. <clears throat> Linebacker was, was sort of a mixed bag yesterday, but I'm not worried about Bassa and Justin Jacobs are going to be tremendous for that for that group. They're going to be great leaders. Uh, I, I, I love I love love the fact that the safety group was much better. That was just a much better performance from the safeties. Um, that's a group that ultimately, when Dan Lanning came in that first year, was not good. Um, was better last year, but still not great. It looks like they might have a competitive unit at safety this year, and you know, still got some guys coming in. <clears throat> Obviously, we could see what happens with the Dalen Austin situation. Of course, he didn't participate, but by no means does that mean that he's off the team. Just has to let that process play out. So lots to like. Uh, love the quarterbacks. I think Dante Moore 
was better than I expected personally. I, I don't think he was better than Dylan Gabriel. I'm not saying that. I just think he was better than I expected. Makes me feel really good about that room and makes me feel really good that if anything happened to Dylan Gabriel, Oregon still got a chance to win that football game or whatever the case might be. Um, Aaron Flowers was was a dude. Again, I was just talking about the safety room. Aaron Flowers is a big reason for that. I think that he's going to be a very special safety. <clears throat> I know Oregon fans have kind of longed for uh, uh, Javon Holland since Javon Holland left and they haven't had that. Uh, it certainly looks like Aaron Flowers has the chance to be a very special player for Oregon. Worst case, if he's you know coming off the bench or, or getting a lot of snaps but not starting, still feel really good about him coming into the game and not giving up a bunch. So um, corners, I'm, I am not even remotely worried about corner, the corner back position for Oregon. You know, Jabbar Bohamba is going to uh, compete for uh, being a first team all selection, the Big Ten. So that was great. Um, on the heels of that, felt good about the game. I think this is a team that's built to compete. Obviously, they have to stay healthy, but there is a lot more depth there than we're used to seeing. Uh, and this is going to be a tough season. If you're Oregon, you're going to have to try and stay healthy and you're going to have to grind out some tough games. Best of all, the cherry on top. Okay, we're making field goals. Okay, <laughs> we're, we're watching Oregon make field goals. So now we no longer have to maybe not have to hold our breath every time. <laughs> you know, it's fourth and seven and Dan Lanning elects to kick. Hopefully we don't have to hold our breath all, all year this year. So that's a good sign as well. Always one of the most the easily forgotten aspects of the game is special teams and uh, look like they were in good hands there. So great, great fan support, great reaction from media, great reaction from the players in the game, great reaction from the coaches, just a really good day to be a duck, if you will, on Saturday from the spring game. <coughs> Excuse me. Additionally, from the spring game, a record setting eight Oregon Ducks were drafted in the NFL draft at the conclusion of the draft. These are all things that happened on the same day. That's pretty dang remarkable. That's, I mean, that's really saying something. And I thought Dan Lanning said it the right way. You had, you had eight guys drafted. You only had one go in the first round. You want to get more of those fourth, seventh round, you know, fifth, sixth, seventh round guys closer to one. You want to get more of the first rounders and second rounders and third rounders, because that's what Georgia does. That's what Bama does. That's kind of what Ohio State does. And that's where Oregon needs to be. And the best thing is you don't you don't go from, you know, very few draft picks to a lot of draft picks uh, all being first rounders overnight. It's a process. It's a process. You got to bring in better talent. You got to develop them. And it certainly looks like Oregon's doing that incrementally and the trend is going the right way. So all great things. If you're Oregon fans, love to hear some of your comments about the spring game. If you were there, something that stuck out, a player that you really were surprised to see an area that you're concerned in love to hear all those in the comments and be sure to subscribe and, and share our content. Thank you guys.